It is estimated that sighted people acquire 80% of their knowledge through vision. For teachers of visually impaired children, the challenge is to maximise pupil learning experiences with a rich and varied multi-sensory curriculum. Special schools. This programme looks at how visually impaired pupils can build confidence, achieve their ambitions and develop the necessary skills to enjoy a full, independent life. At Dorton House Special School in Kent, pupils are supported in using all their available senses to participate in a varied curriculum. Mobility and spatial awareness are encouraged throughout the school. Dorton House employs visually impaired staff, recognising that appropriate role models are necessary to promote children's self-esteem. In Spanish. The school believes that anything is possible and few activities need to be ruled out on health and safety grounds. So if you'd like to raise your bow arm. Hello everybody! One way to promote learning is to share experiences with peers and Dorton House School has forged links with Milton Margai School for the Blind in Sierra Leone. The children have been exchanging braille letters and friendships have been formed. Milton Margai School Choir has been to England and now three Dorton House pupils are about to visit their friends in Africa. We can banner up on a pole and we can raise it when we leave there. As gifts for the Milton Margai children, the whole school has been involved in making masks and tactile maps. At Dalton House, pupils' visual needs are assessed when they first arrive at the nursery to determine the support they will receive. And right from the start, children are encouraged to use hearing, smell, taste and touch to investigate their environment. Even cooking becomes a multi-sensory experience. Now, we're going to make some pizza faces today. My role is to support children in the specialist setting that we have here. We are a separate nursery from the school because we're an assessment nursery. The children can come when they're two and they leave us when they're five. Some of the children will go into the school. Other children go into perhaps mainstream schools in the local area. There's Maggie's face. Or to other specialist facilities for severe learning difficulty or physical difficulties. Good boy. Where's Oliver's nose? We do differentiate the cooking for the different children. We've got Faith, who will explore the food with her fingers and like to bring her fingers up to her mouth to taste, although she can't see what she's doing. What's inside your mouth, Oliver, that you Oliver has more vision, but he needs help putting the food in areas where he can see, because he can't see very well all the way around. And then we've got a little boy who has physical difficulties. Zach has no vision, but will be using his sense of smell and using one hand rather than both hands, but will be encouraged to feel right, so with both. When we make our pizza faces, we're going to put on some eyes. Charlie is very much hands-on and tasting and not using his vision uh, very much. He would need bright lights to be able to see. Wow. Well, like your face. Exactly. The special part of the assessment is looking particularly at their visual needs for actually accessing the curriculum in terms of their reading and their writing and their use of ICT and their manipulative skills. It's well nice. I mean, obviously, a lot of it depends on what their vision is, if they're blind or partially sighted. And then, as a result of that assessment, I can give directions and information as to what size print they need, what modifications they need to the curriculum, any particular specialist equipment they need, and basically how the child learns and how they access learning. We're an interesting school community in that the unifying fact for all of our children here is that they have severe visual impairment. Now, what do you think might look like eyes? But they may or may not have additional disabilities so we have quite a lot of children who one might otherwise describe as children with moderate learning difficulties but they're also visually impaired we also have children who have very significant other disabilities and of course although they may not have 
examination success. Nevertheless, for many of them, they have a lot of personal success in terms of personal achievement. Two. Thank you. Thank you. One. Two. Two. What do we need in the middle of our face, Oliver? They're coming from the very close unit of the family and it's the first step out into the sighted world for them. So that's why it's so important that it's a safe, secure environment with, with uh, teachers that really get tuned into their needs. Cut it in half, we've got two. So we work on the children really being happy um, because right, a happy, confident one. child is one who's going to learn. Oh, you're going to put that one on as a, as a male? Should we put it that way up? Because then yeah, there's a, a smiley store. face. Cooking, it's an excellent multi-sensory <laughs> experience for the children, so the end result isn't the important thing, it's the process that they've gone through. So it can mean that they've explored containers, packets, all useful things, life skill for later on. It's crunchy, isn't it? Fantastic with your tongue. They're able to make a mess here, nobody minds, that's the whole point. They're very little children and they need really to be able to cover themselves in it if necessary to find out mm -hmm. the different properties, dry, wet, sticky, which they need to feel and they need to explore. And we're going to put it on the baking tray. Okay. Put it next to rocks. Mobility is begun with the very youngest children. Um, it's not started as a formal way, it's done as a very informal way of playing with the children, but with specific activities that will help their body awareness. Tell you what, should we do the head, shoulders, knees and toes? So it might be action rhymes with the locating their heads as opposed to their feet, finding out where they are just on the floor and making them aware of their positions in space. We don't hold their hands if they are happy to walk on their own. That is the whole point, that they can do the same as any other child. I'll meet you at the stairs, Samuel. The building itself is, is well adapted. We do keep the corridors very clear. There's sensitive lighting, so that's not going to glare and upset the children whose eye conditions that might mean that they're very sensitive to light. Good boy, what are you doing? Square. For those pupils who will eventually use a cane, there are pre-cane skills to be learnt. Primarily, body and spatial awareness. I told Samuel and I need. Samuel at the moment is learning his pre-cane skills and that involves learning body protection, uh, trailing, squaring off. And he's been learning this route for about four weeks. We'll continue that route till he can do the whole route back to class. I was with him today, so gradually I will withdraw and I'll meet him at set places on the route and eventually he will do the route and I'll meet him at class. Where are we? That's right, that was really good. Well done. Samuel has some learning difficulties, but he's actually achieving well for uh, his, his age at the present time. We're developing his body and spatial awareness. We're continuing to develop his pre-cane skills. Body protection. Right, so we're going to go into the gym corridor. He was trailing what we call the shoreline, which was the wall line, and he was probably also using a protective technique. And at the same time, we were encouraging him to use his remaining senses, particularly um, his sense of hearing, which is the primary sense after the visual sense. He would also be encouraged to use his tactile and olfactory senses as well. Samuel, what have you got to do? Good boy. Well done. It's nobody else. Well done, Samuel. It's nobody else. Some got a good action and and you no know, practicing, trying and and squaring off. He generally, mannerisms, certainly with youngsters who are congenitally blind, uh, can develop, and if they're not um, highlighted or pointed out to the individual, they, they become, as, as a youngster, perhaps not as distracting, but as an adult, sometimes unacceptable, because often you get the eye poking, the rocking, perhaps the head shaking, that sort of thing. But it is something that you need to draw to the child's attention, and you don't reinforce it by saying, Samuel, don't do that. You maybe just place a finger on the head and the hand moves away, simple as that. And to walk across the foyer. The program is actually based on a pyramid of objectives. 
the baseline being the development of sensory awareness, um, the development of what we call pre-cane skills, and the development of body and spatial awareness. And the pinnacle of that pyramid is ultimately independent travel with a long cane. And we're talking probably in terms of a totally blind person here. Now Samuel is still realistically on the baseline of this pyramid. Now you've got youngsters perhaps where just loss of sight is an issue, you have youngsters with learning difficulties and you also have youngsters who are non-ambulant. But all these children benefit from the orientation mobility program. We've got the specialist curriculum which is about mobility and orientation and we follow the national curriculum. We don't disapply any of our children but obviously adapted to meet the needs of these particular children. But alongside that, there's also the ordinary, everyday parts of independence. And we've very much embedded that in the curriculum that we offer to all children. And we call it Skiffle, Skills for Independent Living. And there's the whole issue of them being able to access information that usually we access through sight. So if children haven't got that, then you've got to do something instead. And that, for the young children, will be about real everyday experiences. So in their playhouse, they'll have real fruit, not plastic fruit, as basic as that. But for some of the older children, it's about enabling them to access in a tactile form. Now, if I were teaching archery to mainstream children, I would give a demonstration of the points of technique that I would wish them to do. But obviously, in this instance, I can't show by demonstration. Therefore, my use of language has to be as precise as possible. So, Nick, if I stand at the shooting line, yep. if you would like to come forward to me yep. and stand opposite me. Obviously, the health and safety aspects of a sport like archery are really important. Uh, the children have to be made aware that there's a very set series of guidelines that they have to adhere to in order to make the sport safe. You draw a line across your toes, they will be facing the target. So Only under the instructions of the person who's taking so the lesson right will they come up to the shooting line and shoot. And nobody goes beyond that. And I'm very, very strict about that. OK, so you're going to hold it up at shoulder height. Now, Nick has a very small field of central vision and no peripheral vision. So Nick is able to see the target, but there's other things he's not able to do. He wouldn't necessarily be able to see me unless I was standing directly opposite him. So positioning of the teacher in relation to the pupil is very important as well. So put your fingers on the string, slide down till you feel the button. So every time you put your fingers on the string to release an arrow, it's always in the same position. Yep. And just turn your head towards the target, mm -hmm. draw, keep your elbow high, and when you're ready, release. Excellent, well done. Now, same feeling. Yep. And middle finger to the corner of the mouth. That's pretty good. <laughs> we'll go and have a look in a moment, okay. but everyone has to wait until all the arrows have been shot before we go up to collect. It's all done in a very systematic way. Uh, no. About a tenth of an inch off that cross. In fact, I think <laughs> you're actually just touching one of the legs of the cross. Yeah. That is brilliant. I make sure that everything has its place and everything in its place because it's very important when you're trying to build confidence in spatial awareness that they can expect things to be as they remembered. Just slot your feet into the holes Thank there, you. okay? For blind children, it's important that they have some point of reference so that they know when their feet are in position, their hand is at the right place. So we have some foot plates and we've also got a tactile sight. They have to build up trust so that they know that you are going to keep them safe. Just take your time. When you're ready, lift Thank your you. bow arm up. Nice and easy. Sometimes my tone of voice hasn't been the correct tone. I've startled them. It just hasn't sounded right to them. And they will also pick up your moods as well. And release. Good. If you don't talk enough, it makes them feel very insecure. So it's getting it just right. Good. That's one of the things I have to work on, you know, how to use the voice. Yeah. Okay, that's centre target. Now I want you to slide it out. 
and you've got one two and one just below it okay yeah. so okay. you've got them around four o'clock on the clock face yeah just to the right of center I don't have all the answers I'm learning all the time and that's one of the joys of the job it just gives them an added dimension to their life. I mean, it gives them independence, sense of achievement, self-esteem, sense of self-worth. When I started archery, it was very, very hard. Archery, it has meant a lot to me because it means that I have an extra leisure hobby that I can continue outside of school. Get the right technique. It's quite easy off to that. I've entered two competitions and I have retained, the, retained a cup in the last two years outside of school. The Paralympics, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> I won't put the apron on just yet. No. Dawson House aims to encourage children in their aspirations and there are visually impaired staff who can act as role models. Part, okay. So, should we start from the top then? Yeah. Okay. When I was about 16, 17, I lost my eyesight and I went to the college down the way from here, so it's connected to Dorton, um, where I did my A-levels, etc., and then went to live in Spain for a couple of years to learn the language. Um, and then since then I came back to work here using my languages and working with uh, the staff and the children, also doing counselling as well. I'll say, hola, buenos dias. Hola, buenos dias. Yeah, hola, buenos hola, buenos dias. Eleanor? Hola, buenos dias. Que desea? Can we do that already? Any, any of the, the main courses, yeah? Oh, Vicky, you can do your pudding afterwards. Works pretty well within the school. Um, means I have a bigger empathy with the children. Quisiera. We can work together using Braille, large print. We use a CCTV, which will enlarge the print if they need to read it onto a TV. Um, chocolate, I uh, We use computers which uh, have speech on or Zoom text, so an enlargement program. And you'll add up how much it is and you'll ask for it, okay? Other than that, the only sort of adaptions we make is that we do it more focused on, on the speech and the pronunciation and on the speaking and the listening, uh, rather than maybe so much reading and writing. Hola, buenos dias. Hola, buenos dias. ¿Y qué te Sí. Si. Paella. Por favor, gracias. Mm. Para beber. Para beber. Zuma de fruta, por favor, gracias. Quiere postert, por favor. Helado de chocolate, por favor. Uh, what we try and do is have something visual or tactile for them to work with. So we focus a lot on role plays and, you know, things where they can actually get up and move around rather than just sitting still and learning a list of words, which can be a bit tiring. Add them up, tell me it in Spanish. 10, 11, 12. We have plates and cups and things so that they can move them around and it makes it a bit more realistic for them. Por favor. Gracias. Adios. Adios. Amen. I started school here when I was four years old. It was uh, 1987. Best teachers were your friends, and uh, that's why I think I did so well at the school, because they were just so friendly. There's only sort of eight people to a class. You know, you just felt like you knew everyone straight away. Uh, it was just a, just a really nice atmosphere. I would have rather gone to a special school than a mainstream school, because uh, I got good qualifications and better job prospects at the end of the day. And I left school when I was... 16 and then I went straight down to Dalton College and I was there for four years and now I'm back working here and I've been working at Dalton now for two years as a receptionist. We believe in these children and know that a lot of them are very very capable. The reality is that 75% of blind and partially sighted adults have never worked so therefore we have an emphasis on supporting blind and partially sighted young people into employment. Because of security you've got a keypad which, because of my sight, I can't actually remember the numbers. I, I remember it as a, sy a symbol. This is the reception. There are limits on the things that they can do because of lack of vision, but that does not hinder us in terms of wanting the very, very best for them. My job entails taking bookings, answering calls. I do a lot of typing sometimes, following up um, extension numbers. It's quite versatile, really. <laughs> It doesn't matter how many O-levels and A-levels our children leave the school with. If they are unable to achieve independent travel, they will never really achieve their full potential.
you know, one can get taxis to work, one, you know, can sort of obtain sighted assistance, but realistically it is the independent traveller who will ultimately achieve more. Dear Jay, it gives me a great pleasure to write you this letter. The partnership between Dalton House and Sierra Leone's Milton Margai School impacts on all areas of the curriculum and is embedded in their schemes of work. We started off by looking at humanities, music and art. And in humanities, we specifically looked at conflict resolution and were able to devise a scheme of work which was relevant to both schools. We started off in a very simple way with quarrels in the playground. And, of course, this expanded to the terrible conflict that had happened in Sierra Leone uh, in the late 90s. The main causes of visual impairment tend to be measles, river blindness, and there are children there who have lost their sight following the atrocities of the troubles. They've had the advantage of sight, even if only for two or three years, and that makes a huge difference to them, how they perceive the world and how they move in, in space. Uh, whereas many of our children here have been blind from birth. The music world was an obvious way to go because the Milton Margai School for the Blind has a choir. So last year we were sharing songs and when the children came over they performed together. It's been absolutely invaluable what the children have learnt from each other. We do want to be able to perhaps look at maths, to consider how we can link in science and also in skills for independent living. With the art situation, it's not quite an equal exchange of ideas because they have no art and craft taught in the Milton Margai School at all at the moment. It's vital that visually impaired children strengthen their hands, that they develop their fine motor skills as young as possible because these are going to be absolutely invaluable to them in terms of braille reading and writing and actually making sense of the world around them, which they do to a very large extent through their hands. I tied my mask and I put, and I put, put the clay on it on, and I put this clay on this and like make the, the nose bigger. Our children have been working here on tactile pieces of work that they are going to take out with them as an examples of what we do here. But the object is to be able to help them develop their art and craft using local materials. What's the map for? Where's it going? Um, it's going to go to the Sierra Leone school. And we're going to help them to create a piece that can be brought back and hung in our school. So this, in a sense, is the beginning of what we hope will be something far greater, and that eventually they will have art and craft clearly established on the curriculum. But in our art curriculum, we shall also be incorporating some of what our art teacher will have learnt um, on the visit out there. This time next week, we will probably be boarding, won't we? Yeah. Before Kyle, Nick and Leanne depart for Sierra Leone to visit their friends at Milton Margai, there is a last-minute meeting to finalise their plans and make sure everyone knows what to expect. So there are one or two things we need to sort out before we go. We still haven't thought about what we might take for all the children. So I have dutifully brought in my evening primrose. Kyle, you must have remembered doing this with us. Yeah. when you were little, because it's yeah. a good pre-braille skill, getting their fingers nice and strong, and the children there haven't got anything. Kyle, who I taught when he was two and a half, the most shy, timid, totally blind child, very, very unforthcoming. Now he could talk the hind leg off a donkey. Do you know about malaria? Uh, I know how it starts and how the tablets stop it. He's an able boy, academically but he's also a delightfully oh, no, interesting young man. Yeah. So you're going to be Dr Kyle. He knows that he wants to work in radio, for example. He knows he wants to be a DJ. He's very, very clear about that. And I, I would be surprised if he didn't get there. 
Nick came to us just before the end of Key Stage 2. Absolutely delightful young man, who in a sense is thriving in being in this much smaller community um, where he's noticed, where his gifts are noticed, where his talents are noticed. And, you know, he's, he's had some personal challenges. But nevertheless, he's becoming a very rounded, mature young man and, again, a very, very capable one. Great carpet coming down the steps. We've had children who have been very shy and reticent to start with and really not wanting to be involved, and yet they've done it. Is it, is it the same thing that Nick's been making? Probably. It's, it's as big as that knob in. It's as big as that map out there. Well, Leanne is slightly younger. She's a Year 9 pupil. She has not so, been with us that long and she's one of those young people who perhaps found it quite difficult to settle in her mainstream school. You said last week we could bring tea, tea bags or whatever. Yes. She's yeah. extraordinarily yeah. friendly. She's actually a very, very able sportswoman. She has adopted parents and she was talking about her natural father who apparently came from Sierra Leone. So she very much wanted to go to the country and she was very open about it as well and said, I want to go while I've still got some vision um, and see what it's like. Will, will, will it be, you know, mod, um, quite easy to get milk out there? When the children from the Milton Margai School came over here, some of our children found them a little overwhelming. They're very, very touchy-feely. Some of our children found that just a little bit out of what they their normal experience, not Leanne. She was there with them, great friends, the whole time. So she will thoroughly enjoy it and the rest of us will enjoy having her there. I'm going to go up to the RNIB probably on Tuesday and get the maths equipment, the tactile rulers. Talking There's still huge similarities that the children themselves discovered through writing letters. There's the interest in music, the interest in teenage angst problems, you know, whether we're going to find a boyfriend or a girlfriend and all the rest of it. My best music are tumba dance, Sweetie and I think pasta. that's been one of the major advantages of the link. What are your hobbies? What is your school song? That despite the differences, they're children, young people, and they've all got the same hopes, wants and dreams. Our school song is We Cannot See But We Will Conquer. Hajo is 15 years old. Your heart to heart, Santa Clara. Evie, that's Carl's My pen friend. friend. You remember Evie? Do you know we're so alike? It's scary. In what ways? <laughs> well, we we just get on so well. You know, just we we were always finding stuff to talk about. There was never any silence. There was always stuff to be asked. Always stuff to talk about. The end.